Glenn, and I want to show you an ultra cool competitive research trick in Google. This is not the same old stuff you're hearing. This is a way to combine several different intelligent services to really zero in on what's working for your competitor in pay-per-click. It only works in pay-per-click when you've got a competitor who's not also ranked highly in the natural search. So that means that they're in the paid advertising area up here or on the side, and they are not in the organic listings down here on the first page or two. Um, the reason that is, is that we're going to use their traffic patterns to isolate when they turned on and off the traffic and figure out exactly when they hit the sweet spot and found something that was working. So, okay. Now I typed in web hosting. I put this 46845, that's just a random five digit number. The reason I did that was to trigger Google's broad match algorithm and make sure that only the top sites came up. So we know that these are fairly good, well-performing um, pay-per-click advertisements. And I happen to have been tracking this market for a while. So I know that this top-10-webhosting.com, he's been around for a while. He's doing okay. Actually, it's been quite a few years. So um, now that you've isolated a site and, and you'd want to, I, I'm not going to make you look for this, but if you scan through the free listings, you want to make sure you don't see his domain anywhere in the free listings. You might actually go to page two or page three, because if he's getting any significant traffic from organic search, then the this technique won't work. So this is really only good for pay-per-click advertisers specifically, not pay-per-click and organic advertisers. Okay. So now this is his site. I preloaded it like a cooking show. And this is his web hosting portal review site. And I'm saying his, that's really very sexist of me. It could be her or I don't know, maybe it's a talking goat or something like that. But but um, I digress. This is the site. And well, that's kind of cool to know that there's a site that's working and we can see that what to emulate. But what happens when most people find out that there's another site that's working is they don't know what part of the site is working well and what parts they've actually tested versus what parts they just kind of slapped up and and people frequently will succeed in spite of themselves. Do you understand what I'm saying? It doesn't necessarily mean that everything on the site is working just because some things are. And so we really want to isolate what changes did they make that made it work. And to do that, I'm going to go over to Alexa to start with, and I'm going to look at his traffic pattern. Now, this is a cooking show, so I cleared this all and I did this for you before and I typed in top10webhosting.com and I, I got his traffic pattern. What do you notice about this? What you should notice is, okay, he started, looks like around 2005. Well, actually that's as far back as it goes, but he wasn't doing a lot of traffic. Did something and he had a spike around here and then he went back, back to nothing. Went kind of up and down for a while, then back to nothing. And then it looked like he figured something out that was probably working because he didn't go all the way back to zero for a long time. So from the beginning of 2006, really all the way through to about the middle of 2006, he was doing pretty good. What probably happened is a competitor came into the market and, and then he had to pause and test for a while. See, so he's going down here um, and then he goes back up for really, he didn't touch down again. He hasn't touched down all the way. It's now the middle of 2008. He might be having some trouble dealing with the competition because he's getting less traffic than he used to, but he hasn't had to touch down again. So I think we can assume that whatever he did, right around the middle of 2006, whatever he did is probably his major breakthrough, his second major breakthrough, because that's what he's been running for a long time with. And his first major breakthrough was in the middle of 2005. Wouldn't it be great if we knew what he did? Well, how could you figure out what he did? I'll tell you. You go to the next part of the cooking show, which is at archive.org. And this is, for those of you who don't know, where the Internet Wayback Machine lives. And the Internet Wayback Machine is exactly what it sounds like. It's some place that takes a snapshot of your site and my site and every site it can find on the Internet. And if you type in your domain or the domain you want to spy on, that's the one I'm typing in. The Actually, I got that wrong. It should be top-10-hosting, right? Top-10 hosting list. Let me just go back to Alexa and make sure I'm comparing the right domain. Top-10-web-hosting. Top-10-web-hosting. Okay, we got that. Dot com. And we don't need all the HTTP. And let's see what happens if we can take a look at his site. Okay, 
and in the Wayback Machine, you should see listings for as far back as he's been archiving. Now, now we see he actually goes all the way back to 2004. The problem is that the Alexa traffic machine will only take us back. Let me go there for a second. Yeah, that only goes back three years at max. So we can only look back to the middle of 2005. That's too bad. It would have been nice to see what he was doing all the way at the beginning. But what are our critical dates? Well, the first critical date, right around the summer of 2005, he was doing something that allowed him to make money for a while. So let's go back and see what he did in the summer of 2005. So, okay, before the summer, let's let's take a look at what he was, looked like in May. I'm clicking on his link so we can look at his site. And the first thing that I notice, now let's compare that site to what we have now. This is his site back in May of 2005. First thing I notice is that he does not have an individual page for every review site. Look, his, he's got the same kind of format, like a tabular format, but let's go back here. This is his site today. Oh, look, and he's got a review column. And if you click on that today, then he's got a whole page about that individual site. So obviously that's part of how his site evolved successfully. Let's see if that's what happened right around that time or if that happened later. So um, this was 2005, middle of, this was May of 2005. Let's see what happened. Let's go to the middle of July 2005 because that's a little after he made the change. Let's see if he did that. Let's wait for a second, see if I'm right. Okay, it looks like that is around when he introduced the review pages. We can even go back and see what his review pages looked like back then. So now, if I was doing this off camera, and I didn't want to waste your time and I, was, I wasn't worried about wasting your time. I would go through, I w oops, I'm sorry, I would go through date by date by date and find out exactly when he made the change and, and make sure I wasn't missing it. But let's see what his um, review pages actually looked like back then. Hopefully they archive that also. Sometimes they don't archive all the sub pages. But this is enough of a breakthrough that, yeah, see? So he put in a kind of schlocky review page way back then and that obviously worked for him. That's what made it possible for him to go forward without turning off the traffic. Remember the way that I know that is by looking at the um, traffic pattern here, middle of 2005, that's what he did. That's what he did. He put together individual re review pages and then he could run his traffic almost a whole year before his competitors caught up with him. So that's really interesting. Um, I might go and take a look and see what else he did um, throughout 2005, is there any other major changes? I could see how his those review pages evolved, get a sense of what he was testing, what was working for him. It could be they didn't really evolve. It could be that all, all he did was just go out and get more and more traffic since it was working. So let's see what the review pages look like. I'm clicking on that. Yeah, he evol he's evolving the review pages a little formatting, putting some stars, putting some columns. So let's go back and I think you get where this is going. I'm going to go back to my traffic pattern. Okay, the next thing that happened was the middle of 2006. I'm going to look at that really quick and then I'm going to leave you because I think you get the idea and I want to stay under the 10 minute limit for YouTube. Um, so the middle of 2006, let's see what happened in July 2006. What do we see that's different there? I'm going to bet it's something else about that review page. I think he figured out the review page. Okay, well, he still hasn't made up. He still hasn't come to the fancy format that he's got now. Because if we look at his current page, it's a little brighter with more graphics and it's a little prettier. It's got these buttons on it for the reviews. So he obviously decided he had to draw more attention to the review pages. And well, it's taking a little bit to load. You know what? I'm going to let you do this yourself if you want to. So let me just template this for you. Start in Google, find a competitor that you know is doing well in pay-per-click. When you know that they're doing well, load up their current website, then go to another tab and load up Alexa and examine their traffic pattern. In their traffic pattern, find out exactly when the change might have occurred and then go to archive.org and figure out what the heck they did at that time. And then you will know it's kind of like being in the back door office and finding out exactly how they put it together. 
Okay, my friends, go out and prosper. Thanks.